So what are you guys? We are the Swartwood family! So are you guys real Swartwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! Okay. So now let's get to what everybody was talking about. Let's do permutations. He, he will not care what you call it, just as long as you can do it. Okay? So, but if you want to be really formal, I need two things for permutations. We we're going to look at them. Uh, number one is there's no replacement. In other words, once you use a guy, you can't use him again. Do you see in that previous problem? You could reuse it. I could go alcohol, alcohol, drugs, alcohol, nothing. Reuse choices. Here, I'm going to make sure we don't repeat. So no repeats, meaning no replacement. These are the situations I'm going to use this guy in. OK, don't worry too much about memorizing this. I just need to put it up here to be formal. OK? The second thing which separates it from combinations is in a permutation, do you remember? Does order matter or not matter? Order matters. But there's a trick to this. So when I'm showing problems, there's a way to think about this too. OK. So here's the easiest way. Um, order matters with common sense. Like if you line people up in a line, the left-hand side is different from the right-hand side, so order should matter. You guys agree? OK. When you seat people at a table, first someone's seated to your left and to your right, order matters again. You guys agree? The hidden fact in here is whenever you see labels, so whenever you see a label, that's implying order. So let me show you what that means. I have 10 people. I have three positions. President, vice president, treasurer. I don't explicitly tell you order matters, but when you see this, I'm labeling these guys, right? That's code for order matters. Because if I have Bill, Fred, and Bob, it makes a difference whether Bill is president or whether what? Bill is vice president. Those are different positions for him. So this order matters. Do you guys buy what I'm saying? Okay, the code for that is labels. Okay, so let, now let's do it. First, we'll just guess. Order matters because president, being president is different from being vice president. Those are labels. How many choices do you have for the president? Ten. No stress. There's ten. So we pick one. Every time I do this, especially when we do harder problems, I'll just make it concrete. So let's say I pick Bill. So he's there. Bill is no longer in the running because you can't repeat, right? So how many choices do I have for the vice VP? Nine. nine. So I choose the VP. So maybe that's Fred. So he's out of the running. How many choices for the treasurer? Maybe whoever this was. Let's just make it Sam. Why not? And then back to the old rule. When you're in the middle of making choices before you get the final outcome, what do you do? You multiply. So then we're done. Okay. That's not stressful, right? Okay. I think the best way for you to do any one of these problems is you just do it like this. I promise you he will not take off if you just do this. Okay, but because we're going to use it for combinations, I guess we should develop the stupid factorial notation. So first, let's do this. I know the real answer is 10 times 9 times 8 to that problem we just did. Do you guys agree? The number of people involved was 10, right? And how many places did I pick out? Three. So, so this is kind of like the people, and these were like the places or positions. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to make this really rough and mellow. Okay, so let's do this. You know they love that stupid factorial notation. So even though that's the real answer, they want you to write it with stupid factorials. So I could do this, 10 factorial. But 10 factorial is what? 10 times 9 times 8, all this junk down to 1. Do you guys agree? And we're going to cheat. You already know what's the real answer. The real answer to my question is 10 times 9 times 8. It's just this junk, right? So all I'm doing is I'm working the stupid formula so it matches what I already know. But we could do that. So to fix this, what would you divide by? So you just see 10, 9, and 8. 7. 7 on down. But you're totally right. That's 7 factorial. So do you agree if I divide these two, it's just what I wanted? Because I already knew the answer is 10 times 9 times 8. Okay? So I'm trying to get to that stupid formula. This guy makes sense. He's n factorial, the number of guys we're looking at. The problem is when they write the formula, they, want to they look at the places you care about. But really, what was the setup? You had president, vice president, treasurer. So how many spots did you care about? Three. But then you got, so three spots mattered. All the rest were what? <coughs> Garbage, right? So you threw away everything left behind. So the truth was, you had 10 spots. Three of these mattered. Do you guys agree? What's left over is the garbage you need to get rid of. But that was 7 factorial. Do you guys agree with that? OK, so the way I'm going to write this formula is take all the spots that are out there, take the number of spots that matter, the difference is all that crap that's left over, divide out to make it work. I personally never use this formula, but I do this junk. 
I always do it like this. And I'm not doing this to torture you. I'm doing this because we need it for combinations. Okay. But does everybody see what we did? That wasn't bad, right? Okay. Okay. People seem so quiet. Mm-hmm. We're good, right? Uh, yeah, um, this, it's not stressful. I might sound a little more hyper than normal because I just did a three-hour review for 6A. And if I don't, like, get active, I will, like, fall asleep. Mm-hmm. It's okay. okay. So, we start with this. That's not so bad. Okay, so I think that's it for the moment. This is a permutation. Now the question is, do we want to do a problem? No, let's not. Let's do a comp... Uh, okay, let's do one. My bad. I lied. Okay, so let's say we have 11 books. Version 1, mellow. Version 2, a little bit of thinking. And sometimes it's not just the formula, but we could think our way through this. So you have 11 books. You line them up on shelf from left to right. So I'm guessing order matters. I'm also guessing a book can't be in two positions at once. So no replacement, right? Okay. Can you tell me how many ways can I do this? It's better you think it out than you... St- I, think, I don't think this formula is so helpful at all. I mean, you could do it. It could be like 11 guys. How many spots matter? All 11. 11 minus 11 is 0. 0 factorial is 1. So you could do it that way. But you can just think. How many choices for the book in the leftmost spot? 11. 11. Once you choose that book, how many for the guy next to him? 10. And then how many of these do you have to place? All of them. Do you agree you go all the way down? And in the middle of making choices, what do you do? Multiply. So this is just 11 factorial. 11 books, 11 factorial ways to arrange them. Four books, four factorial ways. Okay. That's not bad, right? Okay. Can we make it slightly harder? Okay. It's not just a trick. You're going to see them in lots of similar sort of problems. So let's say we do the same thing. In fact, I shouldn't say that. I should just tell you verbally. We're going to use the same 11 books, but we're going to do it this way. Four of them are math books. Six of them are history books. And, well, let's make this five, just so I get some variety, right? And then two of them are bio books. Like you're taking LS or something, okay? Okay, so we have these guys here. Now, if I just told you I had 11 books, and I said... Four happen to be math, five history, and two bio, but there's still 11 books. There's still 11 factorial ways of arranging them. Do you guys agree? Okay, so here's a twist. I want you to keep all of the math books together. You can move them around any way you want, but you can't have math, math, history, math. All the math books have to sit together. Then I want you to keep all the history books together, and I want you to keep all the bio together. Okay? Now my question is, with that restriction, this is the worst it would get for this sort of problem, how many ways can you do this? What do you guys think? No stress. I'm not on crack. You've kind of seen something similar, right? In homework? How can you do this on the exam? Freshmen and sophomores sit together in a row. You have like five freshmen, six sophomores. How many ways? 11 factorial. What if all the freshmen have to sit together? What if all the s- sophomores have to sit together, but the juniors can sit wherever they want? This is that sort of problem. This is you're grouping some together. So it's very hard to write all this crap out and to kind of guess what it would look like. So the easiest way, it's how you picture it. Use big grouping on any single problem whenever you can for counting. So do you agree these four guys have to sit together? I don't know how, but they have to be together. So basically what you've got is you've got a math block, and then you've got a history block, and you've got a bio block. And you can't mix them together, because all the bios stay together, all the history stay together, and all the math. Do you guys agree? So there are only three blocks. How many ways can you move three blocks around? Six, perfect, but we're thinking three factorial, right? Three choices for where the math book goes, then two for where the history, and one for the bio. Do you guys agree with that? So there are three factorial ways to move this block around. So let's just pretend. I pick a concrete order. Let's say I do pick one, and it looks like this. Could you figure out where the books are? I mean, can you tell me right now? You know where the math books are, but do you know which math book is on the left? No, you don't. So you have to do more. So look inside this guy. How many math books are there? Four, how many ways could you arrange those guys around? Four factorial, excellent. How about for the history? How many ways can you move those history books around? Five factorial. How about for the bio? How many ways can you move the bio books around? Two factorial. And then the big question, um, I mean, it's easy now because all we do is multiply, but it'll get harder a little bit later. In order to see all the books that you have, is it enough to know math, history, bio? No. So you have to do this action, then you have to do this action, then this, then this. Do you guys agree you have to do all of this crap? before you figure out what you have. So when you're in the middle of making choices, you've got to multiply. So this is the answer. Framing. Are we okay with this? Okay, okay. 
But again, all we really did was we did permutations. This isn't a strict permutation, because I only plugged and chugged here. But for this grouping thing, I had to think a little bit. OK? OK. So can we let this guy go? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So this guy goes bye-bye. OK. So now let's push it up. To